This video presents the secure hash algorithm, specifically the SHA2 family of cryptographic hash function. The outline of this presentation is as follows. I will start with the secure hash algorithm standardization stated at the FIPS POP 180-4, followed by the definition of the cryptographic hash function, its properties and applications. The SHA2 family of algorithms is then presented showing its general operation procedure, characteristics, and applications. After which, a detailed discussion of the SHA2 family specifically using the SHA256 functions and constants. Lastly, a step-by-step -step illustration of the SHA256 pre-processing stage and hash computations are demonstrated considering a one-block message as an input to the system. Federal Information Processing Standards Publication 180-4 states the standard specifications for the secure hash algorithms. These algorithms are used to process a message and generate a condensed representation often referred to as message digest. FIPS Pub 180-4 was issued by the National Institute of Standards and Technology as U.S. Federal Information Processing Standard. These hash algorithms pertain to secure hash algorithm family, namely SHA1, 224, 256, 384, and 512. What exactly is this cryptographic hash function? A cryptographic hash function is defined as follows. An n-bit hash is a map from arbitrary length message to n-bit hash values. It is an n-bit hash that is one-way and collision resistant. Cryptographic hash function is essentially a hash function wherein from a given arbitrary length of data returns an n-bit digest. These secure hash algorithms generate an n-bit hash value in an iterative one-way hash function. By one way, this would mean that the digest cannot be decrypted back to the original message. This makes cryptography completely different from encryption. Moreover, a cryptographic hash function is said to be collision resistant. Any change to it be accidental or intentional to the input message will result to a change in the digest at very high probability. A cryptographic hash function must have the following properties in order to withstand cryptanalytic attacks. First is pre-image resistance. It is intractable to obtain the original message given a hash. Second is a second pre-image resistance. Given an input message M1, it is intractable to find a completely different input message M2 such that both hash values of M1 and M2 match. Lastly, collision resistance. It is intractable to find two different messages M1 and M2, such that both hash values are the same. Cryptographic hash function is a fundamental tool in modern cryptography applications. It is used to ensure data integrity that are transmitted over secure channels. Applications include forms of authentication. First is password validation. In order to validate a password, the hash of a password is initially stored. The password that the user supplies is then hashed. Given the stored hash and password from the client, the password can then be authenticated. As previously defined, cryptographic hash functions is one way, therefore, the original password cannot be obtained from the stored hash. Challenge Handshake Authentication A client can transmit the hash of a password over an unsecure network, let's say over the internet for validation by the server. Then again, the server does this validation without the risk of the original password being intercepted. Third is anti-tamper. A hash of a message is linked to the original message. The message is rehashed by the recipient and it is compared with the supplied hash. If the rehash matches the supplied hash, the message is unchanged. This procedure can also validate data loss during the transmission time. Last is digital signatures. Hash functions are commonly used in digital signatures together with encryption. In digital signatures, the hash of a document can be signed by encrypting it with the client's own private key, thus producing the digital signature for the document. The recipient checks that the client authenticated the text by decrypting the signature using the client's private key, therefore obtaining the original hash. This original hash is then compared to the hash of the text to check its authenticity. How exactly does a cryptographic hash function implement it? The process of implementing the cryptographic hash function involves two parts, the pre-processing stage and the actual hash computation. 
The input to the pre-processing stage is the original message represented in bits, zeros, and ones. The pre-processing stage has three parts. First is padding the message by appending the bit 1 to the message, appending zeros, and the last 64 bits of the message is the length of the original message represented in 64 bits. After padding the message, the total number of bits is a multiple of m bits, depending on the block size used by a specific SHA. The message is then parsed into m bit blocks. Lastly, the initial hash values are set, which is also specific to the SHA algorithm to be used. The second stage is the actual hash computation. From the padded message, the message schedule is generated. Together with the given constants, functions, and word operations of the specific SHA, the series of S hash values are obtained iteratively. The final hash values are then appended and therefore represents the message digest. This block diagram illustrates the output of the cryptographic hash function given an input message. As shown in the diagram, three input messages are sent. First is a black message, second is a text, the big brown fox jumps over the lazy dog, and third is the same text as a second with a period at the end. The cryptographic hash function block shows the output of the five SHAs. As illustrated in the diagram, the message digest for each SHA has a specific length of n bit depending on the algorithm. SHA1 outputs a 160 bits message digest while the output of the SHA2 family is explicitly defined by the name itself. The message digest is represented in hexadecimal form. As previously mentioned, any change, may it be accidental or intentional to the input message, will result to a change in the digest of very high probability. Referring back to the diagram, input messages 2 and 3 only differs by 3 having a period at the end of the text. However, this small change in the input message showed a completely different message digest. This clearly illustrates the so-called avalanche effect, which is evident and which is a property of a cryptographic algorithms that even a slight change of flipping a single bit significantly changes the message. This table lists the characteristics of the SHAs. The message size L defines the maximum input message the algorithm can process. This message size is processed by blocks of n bit size. Each of these blocks is divided into W bit word for hash computation and the word size W depending on the algorithm. The SHA 1, 224, and 256 have the same word message block in block size of 32, 2 to the 64, and 512 bits respectively. The SHA 384 and 512 shares the same sizes as well with word, message, and block size of 64, 2 to the 128, and 1024 bits respectively. The SHA family has the same structure and is virtu virtually identical. The SHA differs in the sense that each SHA algorithm has its own set of constants, functions, initial values, the number of rounds of computing for the intermediate hash values, and the size of the digest. The SHA224 and SHA384 are truncated representations of the SHA256 and 512. By truncated, we mean that an appropriate number of leftmost bits are selected. Thus, the 224-bit and 384-bit message digest is obtained by truncating the final hash values of the SHA256 and 512 to its leftmost 224-bit and 384-bits, respectively. Since the algorithms have the same structure, SHA256 will be used to illustrate the operation of a secure hash algorithm. For this illustration, a one-block message, which is 512-bits for SHA256, will be used as an input to the cryptographic hash function. From the previous slide and for notation purposes, a hex digit is a 4-bit string representation. A word in an SHA-256 algorithm is a 32-bit string and a block has 512 bits. The SHA-256 algorithm makes use of the following function, functions and equations for hash computation. CH, MAJ, big and small sigma, and working variables T1 and T2 all operate in 32-bit words. The parameters used are A to H, which are 32-bit words used in the computation of the hash values, 
KT, the constant values to be used for the iteration, and WT, which is the message schedule. The symbols and operations used are bitwise and XOR complement addition module of 2 to the 33, a circular rotate right shift operation, and a right shift operation. The following shows the 64 SHA256 constant values to be used for the 64 rounds iteration of P e of the hash computation. These words represent the first 32 bits of the fractional parts of the cube roots of the first 64 prime numbers represented in hex. This diagram shows the step-by-step -step process of SHA256, an arbitrary length message string M is the input message and is converted to its 8-bit ASCII equivalent. The message M proceeds to the pre-processing stage, which involves padding the message, parsing the message, and setting the initial hash values, after which is the actual hash computation. With N representing the total number of message blocks, the message blocks M1 to MN, the message schedule WD is generated. The working variables A to H is then initialized. Iteratively, for t equals 0 to 63, the hash values are computed together with the kt constants that was previously presented. At t equals 63, a new set of a to h are derived, of which are used to compute for the intermediate hash value. The same is done for the succeeding message block m2 to mn. After all message blocks have been processed, the final hash values are appended and represents the 256-bit message digest. The succeeding slides will illustrate this The given message M is the string small letters A, B, C. This string of small letters A, B, C is converted to its 8-bit ASCII equivalent. The 8-bit ASCII equivalent of A, B, and C are shown. It was emphasized that the string is of small letters, since a big letter A, B, and C as a different 8-bit ASCII representation. The new message M represented in bits is shown, with L equals to the length of the message, which is 24 bits. The pre-processing stage starts with padding the message M before hash computation begins. This process ensures that the padded message is a multiple of 512 bits in preparation to parsing the message to 512-bit blocks. Given the message size L of 24 bits, a bit 1 is appended. The length of the padded message is now 25. Next is to append zeros. To get the total number of 0 bits to append, we use the equation L plus 1 plus K equals 448 modulo 512. This step ensures that the message is a multiple of 512 bits. The computed value of K is 423. Thus, 423 0 bits are appended to the message L. The length of the padded message is now 448. The remaining 64 bits represent the value of the original length of the message M, which is 24. The 64-bit representation of integer 24 is 59 zeros 110000 and is appended to the padded message. The length of the padded message M is now 512 bits. The padded message can also be represented as 16 32-bit words. Thus, the final padded message M is 61, 62, 63, 80, zeros, and 80, all represented in X. The padded message in hex representation is now parsed into n number of 52-bit blocks labeled M1 to Mn. In this example, the padded message consists of one block taking into consideration a multi-block message. The next 512 bits represent the message block M2 and so on. Since the 512 bits of an input block may be represented as 16 32-bit words, the first 32 bits of the message block M1 are denoted by M1 sub 0 to M1 sub. The hash values H0 to H7 are then initialized. The initial hash values for SHA256 in hex representation are as follows. After the pre-processing stage is the actual hash computation. The words of the padded message block M1 are then assigned to the words of the message schedule WT. 
Wt is derived using the following equations. In this example, there is only one message block M1, thus the message schedule is only of W0 to W50. The working variables A to H is then initialized and is equivalent to initial hash values H0 to H7 initialized in the pre-processing stage. The hash values are then computed. The functions and equations that will be used are listed above. Each function will be discussed in detail to come up with a diagram illustrating the actual hash computation for every iteration. Working variables A to H were previously initialized and are ready for use. Function C, H, is computed using the working equations E, F, and G. A bitwise end operation is performed on E, F, and the complement of E, G. The results are then exported. Next, the function MAJ is computed using the working variables A, B, and C. Bitwise end operation is done on A, B, A, C, and B, C. The results are exported. Big Sigma 0 performs a bitwise XOR operation on the results of a 2, 13, and 22 times rotate write operation on A, while Big Sigma 1 performs a bitwise XOR operation on the results of 6, 11, and 25 times rotate write operation on E. Working variable E1 is computed by adding H, CH, constant AT, and message value WT. We take into consideration that a plus sign denotes an addition modulo 2 to the 23. To implement a plus, the terms are added and performs a bitwise end of hex FF, FF, FF. At T equals 0, a new set of working variables A to H is now computed. H, G, and F will just be equal to the initial G, F, and E, respectively. E is computed as B plus T1, modulo 2 to the 32. Next, we have the new D, C, and B equal to the initial C, B, and A, respectively, while A is computed as T1 plus T2, modulo 2 to the 32. The next diagram shows the actual values computed. From the initial working variables A to H, the SHA256 functions CH, MAJ, Big Sigma 0 and 1, and working equations T1 and T2 are computed and are shown in the diagram, also indexed for. From these computed values, at T equals 0, a new set of A to H working variables are derived. This diagram illustrates the same hash computation for the succeeding iterations t equals 1 to 263. The computed working variables a to h at t equals 0 will now be used as the input to the next iteration t equals 1. This is shown in the next diagram. The working variables a to h derived at t equals 0 will be used as the input to the hash computation function for the next iteration t equals 1. At e equals 1, a new set of a to h values are computed. This a to h values at e equals 1 will now be the new set of values used as input to the next iteration t e equals 2. A total of 64 rounds is to be performed in an SHA256 algorithm. This diagram shows the final a to h values computed at e equals 63. The intermediate hash value can now be computed. From the initial hash values H0 to H7, which were also used as the initial A to H variable, after 64 rounds, a new set of A to H working variables were derived at T equals 63. To compute for the intermediate hash values, the following equations are used. Plugging in the values gives the intermediate hash values. Since this example is a one-block mes message, this intermediate hash value is already the final hash value. However, for multi-block message, this intermediate hash value will be used as A to H working variables for the next message block, M2, and will then again run through the 64 rounds of computation until the last message block. 
The last step in the hash computation is to append the final hash values and come up with the 256-bit hash in hex form. The 256-bit hash value of the input message and small letters ABC is therefore shown. For an SHA-256 algorithm, regardless of the size of the input message, the hash will always be a 256-bit hash value. As defined earlier, one property of a cryptographic hash function is its pre-image resistance, wherein it is intractable to obtain the original message given a hash. This table summarizes several published pre-image attacks on SHA-256. In the paper by Sinantaya and Sartar in 2008 reported attacks which with rounds 23 and 24 having a time complexity of 2 to the 11.5 and 2 to the 28.5 respectively. In 2009 and 2010, pre-image attacks showed significant reduction in the number of rounds by isolate of, of only 24 rounds with time complexity of 2 to 240. Space complexity ranges from 2 to the 6 to 2 to the 16. In 2011, Mendel et al. reported 32 rounds, which he claims to have a practical time complexity. A summary report by Lee et al. early this year included Mendel's data in attacks of 43 and 52 rounds, with time complexities of 2 to the 126 and 2 to the 127.5 respectively. Secure hash algorithms are widely used in security applications and protocols. Cryptanalytic attacks were identified in SHA-1 in 2005. Due to this collision vulnerability of SHA-1, there was a need for a stronger hash function. SHA-2 addresses some weaknesses in the SHA-1. Although SHA-2 has some similarities with SHA-1, the attacks on SHA-1 has not been explained. Despite SHA-2 being a stronger hash algorithm over SHA-1, SHA-2 are not as widely used as SHA-1. The main reason for SHA-2 not being implemented is its compatibility issues with older applications and operating systems. SHA-2 lacks support for Windows XP service pack or lower systems. Moreover, there exists the desire to wait until the SHA-3 is standardized. In the ongoing crypto Cryptographic hash algorithm competition, the National Institute of Standards and Technology selected five SHA-3 candidate algorithms for the third and final round, Lake, Rostel, JH, ECA, and K. The competition is scheduled to end with the selection of a winning function by the end of 2012. Who will it be? This shows the list of references used in this report.